Hello, my friends. Welcome back to episode three of the Ear Training Podcast with Maria. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Hope you guys are doing well. The last episode was the longest um, that I've ever made, so the longest out of the two episodes. <laughs> We're going to try to keep this one a little bit shorter, although I have no promises to make at all. I'm just sitting down to record this, so I don't know, but you will know how long this is going to be. But anyways... So as we go through the episode, whether you're um, able to listen through the whole thing or if you're just focusing on one section at a time, comment your score down below for each of the sections. Um, So again, we're going to cover pitch relationships, singing scales, intervals, triads, seventh chords, scale identification, clapbacks, playbacks, singbacks, and then cadences and dictation at the end. So that's 11 different categories that we're going to cover today. Um, So again, whatever you have time to do, please comment your score down below. And if I'm not covering something that you want me to cover, please let me know because that'll help me curate future episodes to target more of your guys' problem areas. All right, let's do this. So we're going to warm up with a little bit of pitch relationships. I'm going to give you a starting pitch and then a second pitch. And you need to let me know if the second pitch is higher or lower than the initial pitch. Ready? This is your starting pitch. And this is the other pitch. One more time. So take a second, was that higher or lower than the initial starting pitch? Ready? And that was higher. Let's do another one. That's your starting pitch. And so was that higher or lower than the initial pitch? Take a second to think about it. And that was lower. And let's do one more. That's your starting pitch. And was that higher or lower than the initial pitch? Take a second to think about it. And that was higher. All right, so moving on to singing scales, we're gonna be singing major and minor scales today. Um, And I mentioned this in previous episodes, scales are a great way not only to practice just singing on pitch and making sure that you can match pitch when you're singing, um, but also it helps with identifying intervals. So there are two ways to identify intervals and we're gonna do that after we sing our scales. Um, The first way is to link songs to the intervals. So your favorite songs, they should be no-brainer songs um, and whichever interval they start with, you can use that to identify an interval. But a surefire way to um, never mess up your intervals is to do them with singing your scales. For example, you have this interval. So some of you may already know what that is, but if you're wondering if this third is major or minor, you can do that by singing the minor or major scale and seeing which one fits under this interval. So for example, if you know how to sing the minor scale, and then the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you'll know that this interval fits under the one, two, three, the sad, the minor scale, and so it's a minor third. And apart from that, um, one, two, three, the counting of the scales tells you what interval it actually is. So when you're singing your scales, there are lots of options. Honestly, the easiest one is just numbering your scale degrees, as I just did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that'll directly translate into helping you identify your intervals. So it's Probably the most recommended. You can also name the notes, why not? You can do C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. It, um, you can, that way you can also train your um, key signature recognition so you can make sure that you remember how many sharps and flats in a given key. Um, if you're more familiar with solfege, you can do do re mi for that. Um, or for the last way you can do this, you can do movable do, so do re mi fa sol la ti do. 
no matter where you're starting, even if you're starting on an F or an A flat. Um, honestly, I didn't know that even existed until undergrad, um, so it's a little confusing for me, but if you guys are into that, that's totally fine. So I'm just gonna give you an example before we start. Um, this is a G. I'm just gonna ask you to sing the G major scale, and you're gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Okay, so I'm gonna give you A flat. So do your best to name all the notes or just the scale degrees of the A flat major scale. So take some time. All right, so I am going to sing it with you and there's, there's no way to quantify this, so you really have to trust yourself and try to see if you matched what I was singing. Um, so A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Just checking if I was flat or sharp. Okay, let's do a minor. So for now, we're just gonna focus on a natural minors. Later on, hopefully we'll add harmonic and melodic into the mix. Um, let's go ahead and do a sharp, so F sharp. That's your F sharp. And let's sing the F sharp minor natural scale um, your way. So whenever you're ready, and pause this video if you need a little extra time. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. So let's do one more of each. This is D. I'm going to ask you to sing the D major scale from D, using either scale degrees or the notes. So that's your starting pitch again. Take some time. Ready? So you can either do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or you can do D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And let's do one more minor. I'm gonna do C minor. So this is a C. And if you can sing the C minor natural scale, take some time. Ready, and you should have either gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or C, D, flat, F, G, A, flat, B, flat, C. So comment your score down below and let's move on to intervals. And we're building on the intervals we did last last time so we're always going to be adding more and more intervals if you feel like you need some more practice on certain intervals let me know in the comments and i can always drop a mini episode on for example just intervals or this goes for any category just triads just seventh chords etc um, just let me know but also you can always go back to previous episodes and kind of skip around until you get to um, the intervals that we did in previous episodes because we are building and adding more and more so our intervals are going to be minor second, the smallest interval, major second, we were using happy birthday for this one, next minor third, for all my fellow Canadians, um, major third, this is the one that sounds like a doorbell, um, but Honestly, I don't have a very good song that is universal that everybody knows for the major third, so I usually use um, 
the scale for this one. Next, we have the perfect fourth. The wheels on the bus go round and round and twinkle, twinkle, little star. Um, and another thing you can do for the minor and major thirds is build a triad. So if you have the minor third, try to complete it with a perfect fifth to make a triad. One, three, five. And try to see if that's a sad minor or a happy major triad. Um, same goes for major third. That would be a major triad. So what I just played is a major third. Another example. So that would be a minor triad. Therefore, what I just played is a minor third. So I'm going to do one of each, um, but from different notes and all over the keyboard, well, as much of the keyboard as I have. Take a second. And ready? Pause if you need more time. That was a perfect fifth. Take a second, pause if you need more time, ready, and that was a minor third. Take a second, and that was a major second. Take a second. Pause if you need more time. Ready, and that was a perfect fourth. Take a second. Ready, and that was a minor second. Take some time. That was the last one, I believe. And ready? That was a major third. All right, comment your score down below. I want to know how you guys did. And let's move on to the fourth section, triads. We're gonna be identifying major and minor triads in root position. And we're gonna take it a step further by identifying the root third or fifth of the chord I'm playing. And this is going to serve you well later on in playbacks as well as dictations. So it's taking pitch uh, relationships and identification to a new level um, and actually identifying the specific notes of the triad. For example, we have this triad. So first off, I need to know if that was a major or minor. Was it happy? Or was it sad? Take a second. And that was a major triad that was happy. And if you have perfect pitch, you would know that this is an F major triad. Don't worry, I don't have perfect pitch. I'm just saying. The next step is gonna be to identify the root third or fifth. So I'm gonna play you a note from the triad and you're gonna tell me if it was the root or the third or the fifth. Ready? Was that the root? Was that the root third or fifth? Take a second. And that was the fifth. And it goes without saying it helps tremendously to sing the triad back to yourself. So don't Try to do it purely from listening later on when you get more experienced with this and you feel more comfortable you can do it without singing but for now internalizing it and singing makes such a huge difference let's take another triad first off is that a minor or a major 
take a second. So that was ready. Pause if you need more time. A minor triad, and in fact, it was an A minor triad. Now I'm going to play you a note from the triad and tell me if it's the root third or the fifth or the triad. Ready? So sing it back to yourself. Take a second. Was it the root third or the fifth? Ready? Pause if you need more time. That was the third. That was a C. Um, all right, one more. So was that a minor or a major? Happy or sad? Ready? Pause if you need more time. That was a minor triad, and that was E flat minor. Um, so now I'm going to play you a note out of the triad and tell me if it's the root, third, or the fifth. Take a second. Ready? Pause if you need more time. That was the root. All right. And one last one. So was that a major or a minor triad? Sad or happy? And that was a major triad. That was D major. So now I'm going to play you um, a note from the triad and you tell me if it was the root, third, or fifth. Okay, take a second. And that was, pause if you need more time, the fifth. Comment your score down below. We're moving on. Seventh chords, um, we're going to do diminished, augmented, and major. So last time we did dominant sevenths, diminished and augmented. Um, I figured it would be just too much to keep adding on and adding on. So we're swapping in the dominant seventh for a major seventh. So let's talk about the major seventh. It's built using a major triad and a major seventh. Major seventh is almost an octave. This is an octave and a major seventh is one below that. It's not a very nice sounding interval. And fun fact, it is a minor second inverted, just in the opposite order. So I'm playing C and B, but if you play B, C, that is the smallest interval. It's a minor second. So again, this is the major seventh. And here's how it compares to the diminished seventh, which is built on all minor thirds. And the augmented seventh. I'm blanking. Now I don't remember how I played the augmented seventh in the last episode. So let's just recap um, and set the record straight. Augmented sevenths. It might have just slipped my mind, but augmented sounds always confuse me. Um, augmented triad, which is a triad built on all major thirds. So in this case, I'm playing C, E, and G sharp, and then a minor seventh. C, B flat. So again, recap, major seventh. Diminish seventh and augmented seventh. And maybe you can hear in the augmented seventh you have that second, that major second on the top between the G sharp and the B flat. Okay, so I'm gonna play you six chords, may or may not be two of each, but all out of order. 
Please tell me what they are and comment your score down below. First chord. Take some time. Pause if you need more. That was a diminished seventh chord. It sounds super tense. Next one. Does it sound like jazz? Or does it sound like the augmented seventh? Take some time. Pause if you need more time. Ready, this was the major seventh chord. This was your major triad. Okay, um, next. Is it tense? Is it jazz or is it the augmented seventh? Take some time. Pause if you need more time. Ready? And that was. That was the diminished seventh. I forgot how many we did. Two more. Maybe three more. Okay, I don't know. Take some time. Is that the augmented seventh, diminished seventh, or major seventh? Pause if you need more time. And that is the augmented seventh. And let's do one more. Is this the diminished, the augmented, or the major seventh? Take some time. Pause if you need more time. Ready? And that was a major seventh. All right, my friends, moving on. Scale identification. We're going to do harmonic and melodic minors, and just to recap, harmonic minor um, is taking the natural minor scale, um, which shares the notes with its relative major scale, taking the natural minor scale and raising the seventh scale degree. So let's do it with an easy example, A minor. This is the natural form of the A minor scale, and we're just going to find the 7th scale degree, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that was the G, we're no longer going to play the G, the G is turning into a G sharp. This is our new scale. Okay, and we're adding melodic minors into the mix, so melodic um, minors are the most annoying to play for technique, but they are the easiest to identify because they actually change on the way down. So melodic minors, you raise the sixth and seventh scale degrees on the way up. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in A minor, that's F for the sixth scale degree, G for the seventh. So F turns into F sharp, G turns into G sharp. This is the scale on the way up. It's almost like half minor scale on the bottom and then major scale on the top. And on the way down, we cancel it. So on the way down, we're playing just a natural minor scale. Okay, so this is the melodic. And this is the harmonic. Okay, so I'm going to play you a few scales and let me know if they are harmonic or melodic minors. Take a second. Alright, ready? Pause if you need more time. That was a melodic minor scale. Next.
take some time. Pause if you need more. Ready? And that was a harmonic minor scale. Here's another one. Take some time. Pause if you need more time. And that was a melodic minor. All right, let's move on. Next we have clapbacks, playbacks, singbacks. Let's do clapbacks first. So you have a three, four time and two, four time. And these clapbacks are gonna be two bars long. I'm gonna play you something that's either in three, four or two, four. I'm gonna tell you which one. And it's gonna be two bars long. I'm gonna play it twice. Second time, feel free to do baby claps to make sure that you remember the rhythm correctly. Um, that's what the second time is there for, for confirmation. And then I am going to clap what I played and do your best to compare what you were clapping to what I was clapping. Ready? So, first one is gonna be in three, four time. One and two and three and. Okay, and now with baby claps. Your turn. Pause if you need more time. The answer should be Let's do one more. This time in two four time. One and two and Again, with baby claps. Your turn. Let's just clap back the rhythm. Ready? Pause if you need more time. So moving on to playbacks, we're gonna do F major and G major using notes of the pentascale, which means the first five scale degrees. For example, in F major, those are the five notes that you're gonna be choosing from. Of course, I can repeat certain notes. Um, and for the next few episodes, I'm only gonna be starting on the triad scale degrees. So I'm only gonna start on one, three or five so this is where the um triad um notes note identification is going to come in handy because you'll be able to know from me playing the triad what note uh the playback is starting on of course later on we're going to start on whatever note it doesn't have to be a part of the triad but for now um we're keeping it simple ish and starting on notes of the triad ready so this is the f major scale again <laughs> And we're gonna play. One more time. And usually for playback tests, uh, you do only get two tries, but I'm just gonna walk you through um, what you should be listening to and then I'll play it one more time. So listen to the direction of the notes. Are they going up or down? Do you hear any skips? Do you hear notes that are being played all in a row? Um, and again, which uh, notes of the triad are they outlining? And I'm going to be using notes in between as well, but the starting note is always going to be a part of the triad. Hope that makes sense. I'm going to play it one last time. So take some time and play back, I guess. How did I do this last time? I'm just going to tell you the notes um, that I played. Pause if you need more time. Ready? A, C, B flat, and then all in a row down to F. A, G, F. So a c b flat a g f and one more in g major 
here's the G major triad. And luckily in the pentascale of G major, there are no uh, accidentals or sharps or flats from the key signature. So in the F major, I did forget to mention that if you played a B natural, um, that would not be in keeping with the notes of the F major scale. So make sure that you're remembering the key signature of the key we're in. In G major, when we're using a pentascale, remember G major has F sharp. Um, so the pentascale G, A, B, C, D, none of them are F sharp, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, ready? Which note did I start on? Is it going up, down, up? I just gave you the answer. Why did I do that? Um, pretend I didn't say that. Are there skips? Are they going in a row? What is going on? One more time. Okay. Play it back. So you should have gotten started on G. G, B, A, B, C, D. So G, B, A, B, C, D. Okay, let's move on to sing backs. So these are also going to be uh, G major for today, the pentascale. Um, and they're gonna be in three, four time. What did we do last time? Aha, last time we did four, four time. So we're kicking it up a notch this week. All right, so again, this is G major. I'm gonna start on one of the notes of the triad and using the penta scale, the first five notes, first five scale degrees. Ready? So which note did I start on? G, B, or D? One more time. Okay, and I'm going to play it one more time. Make sure to pay attention to which note it's starting on. If it's outlining the triad, skips or steps, and the direction, up or down. Last time. Sing it back. Pause if you need more time. You should have gotten G, B, D, C, A, G. And depending on if you're getting ready for an exam. Um, sometimes they swap playbacks and singbacks, um, and sometimes they will ask you to name the pitches, in which case G, B, D, C, A, G. Or um, again, you can use movable Do. Do, Mi, So, Fa, Re, Do. Not exactly used to using that, um, but if you are, if that's your jam, feel free. So just have that up your sleeve, that's always gonna be good. Um, or sometimes they won't ask you to name the pitches at all, so you'll just do it on la, on a syllable. La, 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 la. That's a little bit more ambiguous, which is why they often ask you to um, name the notes. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to cadences. So last time we did perfect and plagal cadences in major keys. We're still gonna stick to major keys. We're adding one more cadence and that is the deceptive cadence. And this is the coolest cadence of them all in my humble opinion. Let's just go through all the cadences in C major. So this is C major. So the perfect cadence is one, five, one. It can be in any inversion, as long as the bass is one, five, one. It can also do one, five, 
one, right? Because it can go down or up. The right hand can do whatever, honestly. It can do or or. They all sound slightly different, but the main thing is most pieces can totally end on one five one. In fact, they do. Most classical pieces and traditionally kind of formed and composed pieces, um, even if they were written uh, recently, if they're following the classical forms. So, um, it sounds complete, it sounds finished, stable. Moving on to the plagal cadence. It could end a piece, but it kind of sounds like maybe the middle of the piece. So it doesn't totally sound uh, like mid-sentence, but maybe, you know, mid-paragraph, I would say. And that's the one for one. And again, as long as the left hand is, sorry. As long as the left hand is either playing one four one going up or one four one going down, um, that's going to be the deciding factor for you. If you listen to the bass, you can never go wrong because the right hand is going to be doing whatever inversion as long as it's playing one four and one or or or. Okay. The deceptive cadence is one of those cadences that does not end on one. Um, it actually ends on six. So all of these cadences, technically a perfect cadence is five one. Plagal is four one. Deceptive is five six. I'm starting it with one to make it into a progression so it sounds more like music. Technically a perfect cadence is but I think adding a one at the beginning just solidifies the tonic. So that's just to avoid any confusion. For the deceptive cadence, I'm doing one, just to start, five, six. Okay. It's kind of sad because the sixth chord in a major scale is sad. You think it's going to here, but actually, yeah, so. Let me play you a few cadences, and then we'll finally move on to dictation. We'll, we'll call it for today. Um, let's do this. One more time. So, was that perfect? Could you end a piece with this? Does it sound stable, finished? Is it mid-piece, maybe? Semi-finished? Or is it deceptive? Was it sad at the end? Take a second. Pause if you need more time. Because that was a plagal cadence. One, four, one. Next. One more time. Were you deceived by the cadence? Or was it a perfect cadence? Could you end a piece on that? Does it sound stable? Does it sound not that stable, but acceptable for a piece ending. Take a second to figure it out. Pause if you need more time. Last time. <laughs> Trying not to give it away on my face. I've started to notice that especially my younger students excel at ear training because they're actually reading my facial expressions which I need to tone down. So my sincerest apologies to those of you who 
who are not actually listening but are just following my facial expressions, please do not do that. Look away. You ready? That was a deceptive cadence. Um, and last but not least, you're thinking I'm going to totally play a perfect cadence, but I might not. So do not be, do not be deceived by this one. One more time. My finger got stuck. It takes some time to think about it. Could you end a piece that way? Is it deceptive? Was it sad at the end? Or was it a mid-piece? Finished but not quite finished type cadence. Pause if you need more time. That was a perfect cadence. And last thing we're gonna do, dictation. So for this one, it's gonna be three, four time, two bars long. Um, so this overlaps with the length of the clay playbacks, claybacks, and the clapbacks. Um, three, four time using a pentascale, but we're not gonna be doing F major or G major anymore. We're gonna kind of spice things up a little bit with D major. So again, not trying to give away any answers, but try to think back to the key signature of D major and what sharps or flats are in D major and whether or not those sharps or flats are present in the pentascale of D major. All right, this is your dictation. Three, four time, two bars long. Again, I'm gonna play it two or three times and then the score will pop up on the screen with the answer that you should have gotten. Ready? This is the D major triad. And again, in keeping with the theme of today, I am going to be starting on one of the notes of the triad. One more time. So which note did it start on? One, three, or five? Did it go up, down, skip step? How many times did it change direction? Take some time to write it down. Definitely pause, because I'm not going to be able to gauge this properly with how long it takes to write in the treble clef. Um, no key signature for this, by the way, for those wondering. Um, you can, if you want to, you can put the key signature. That's probably going to be easier, um, especially as we go into the more difficult uh, key signatures. But feel free to use accidentals if you want. Ready? And here is the answer. Do -do -do -do. All right, my friends, congratulations. We have completed episode three, yay! Um, I feel like that took a while. I don't know. We'll see how long it's gonna be when I cut it down. I was trying to keep things short and sweet today. Again, please let me know what your score was and if you want me to do a mini episode um, focusing in on one or more of these uh, categories. I will see you guys in the next video. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. Um, if you want to watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. I'm too far away to do the, ah, the thing. I wish I could, I wish I had the longest arm so I could just like, Just pretend I did that. All right, bye guys.